Fantastic. I see it. This court review, this is $20 million. You see this table? This is Putkin and Langford. This is $800 million. This is your value to the company. You're on probation. Any more problems, you're fired. Are we clear? Yes, sir. You know, Cooper, you can lose a lot of money chasing women. But you'll never lose women chasing money. Get your glasses glass glass up. up. Get your glasses glass up. up. Toast to the man. Welcome to a Toast to the Man with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's get to it. So this video is titled The Five Things I've Learned from Older Men. And uh, I took a few moments to really reflect over my life and things I picked up from men. And I didn't grow up with a solid brother, a solid man within the home. But I had my uncle uh, who lived on the same street as I, as I grew up on. I had deacons. I had coaches. And I observed a lot. I observed uh, men on TV. I observed men in the neighborhood. Or men I just came across in relationships with women. Maybe the men were connected to them by relation. So I've watched men. And I've studied men. Uh... I've always been drawn, even as a young boy, I was drawn to men, to be under men, uh, alpha men. That was just my personality. I never was that kid that uh, wanted to sit on the women's laps or be up under the women and be spoiled. I was always around the men, and they wanted me around them. They were shooting the stuff, you know, talking, talking the stuff, talking manly stuff. They always... Uh, took to me and wanted me to be around uh, from the deacons to the coaches. They just took a liking to me. Uh, so that's just my personality from, from a youngin'. So one of the first, well, not first, one of the things that I've learned uh, from older men, uh, back years ago, years ago, man, I dated this young lady and she was a representative for Mary Kay, Mary Kay Cosmetics. Now, her aunt had placed an order with her. And she and I were kicking it. And so uh, we happened to be in her car, just kicking it. And I don't know if she and her aunt had an agreement to meet at a certain time or she was just popping up on her aunt. But, ironically, uh, this is a toy story. Her aunt lived on the street. Her aunt, her family lived on the street I grew up on. So, anyway. So, I wasn't on that street at the time. I had moved out the house, had my own place. But, anyway. We're in the car. We're in her car. So, we go to the aunt's house. To pick up the money for the order. Do the exchange. Aunt gets the product, the grown with her niece gets the money. Well, we arrive at the home, the aunt isn't there. But the aunt's cousin, my girlfriend's uncle, is outside. Now, like I said, I grew up on this street. I know this family. And I know this guy is stable, financially stable, uh, frugal. I know he has paper. I grew up on this street. He's bought candy from me as a child, doing fundraisers. Uh, he's paid me to cut his lawn as a young as a young child. So I know this family. Very stable, two working adults, uh, two kids. So financially stable. So the girl with his niece asked for the aunt. He says. I won't give her name. X, Y, Z is not here. And so the girl was just, just kind of <laughs> standing there. And uh, she was like, uncle, 
uh, why don't you just go ahead and, and pay for her order and, and get the money from her? And he was like, uh, nope, I'm not uh, paying for it because I didn't order it. Just come back when she's here and uh, she'll pay for her own order. Now, the simp, when I heard this, man, the simp in me, well, let me address that first. The simp part. Every man, every man has simp in him. It's just different levels of simp. Some guys are full-blown simp on one spectrum. On the other opposite spectrum, some guys have uh, very little simp in them. Uh, and then you have the people in between those two spectrums. Every guy has something on. And really what that is, we all men have the propensity to try to please our woman and make our woman happy uh, by any means. We have the propensity to go over and beyond to make her happy, uh, even neglect our responsibilities to make her happy and go against what we know is right to make her happy. We all have that in us, just different levels. So, again, I'm young. I'm like 24, 25. I'm hearing him say this. So the simp in me is like, man, thinking, man, just just, uh, just pay for the order. You know? <laughs> but he was he was stuck and had his mind, his mind made up that he was not paying for this order. So we left and we went on our way and did whatever we had to do that day, right? As I got older and started really dealing with women, uh, being married, being in long-term relationships, I started reflecting on certain things. And that was one of the events I reflected on. And I got it. I understood why he did what he did. He didn't do what he did because she was a woman and he was a man or he was being selfish um, or just been, you know, stuck in his ways, so to speak. But he knew his woman. He knew his woman's tendencies. Now, with a different woman, he probably would have had a different approach. Now, like I said, I know this family. He was very frugal, very low key, probably had on maybe not the same, but the same design, khaki suit every day. He, he worked in a plant, uh, had been there maybe 40 years. Very stable guy, wore the same clothes, really didn't broaden or wardrobe. She dressed to the T though. Uh, I'm not sure what she did for a living, but she dressed to the T. Always had a nice purse, nice clothes, heels on, makeup, per perfect hair done to perfection, always. Man, if you were to look at them from afar, you wouldn't put these two together, but that's just the way their personalities were. But he knew his woman. He probably knew that, man, I'm not going to get this money back. Not only that, I don't want to start something I can't finish. I don't want to create this habit. Maybe she had a spending habit. And uh, he was frugal, but he's like, man, I'm not even, I'm not even starting this <laughs> because I can't keep this up and I don't want to keep this up. She can pay her own tab, pay for her own order. At that point, man, uh, their kids were around my age, so they have to be married around 25 years. So he knows her, he knows her tendencies and that was a lesson I learned that, man, you got to know your woman and know your woman's tendencies. Um, just like men have the capability or the propensity to be simps, just on different levels, every woman has the capability of taking advantage of you. Even if she loves you, even if you're, you're her man, her husband, boyfriend, whatever. It's in her to take advantage of you, to get what she wants when she wants it, to be manipulative. It's in her. Like men, when it comes to simping, just on different levels. But she knows how to turn on her femininity to get what she wants. It's just about what to what degree 
and how often and you know what is she willing to go there for it's just different levels but every woman has the capability of being a manipulative woman turn on that femininity to get what they want you got to know your woman learn your woman and so as a young as a young man i had to learn that man i had to study the woman i was with or the woman i was courting court a woman don't be such in such a rush to you know claim a woman as your woman or to move in with the woman court a woman study her get to know how she is in different situations different environments her tendencies you know her uh her negative or challenging aspects about her personality her positive or fruitful aspects about her personality so you just really got to take the time to learn her and study her and even if you decide to get in a relationship with her you still got to continue studying her you know uh she may throw you a curveball but that's something i picked up on later in life when i reflected back i was like man this uh the simping came out of me and my thought but this man definitely knew what he was doing he knew his woman and uh, he knew her tendencies so yeah that's something i learned uh number two have a hobby don't be up under your woman too much and don't be in the home too much case in point <clears throat> my first marriage man we're young man we just used to get into it just about anything, man. Just at each other's throats. Uh, but, you know, I had a very good relationship with her parents. Her mom and her stepdad. I really didn't have a, a relationship bad or good with her biological dad. But with her stepdad, who raised her from the age of two, we had a great relationship. Uh, I respect that man to this day. And so she and I used to get into it bigger back and forth man and uh he taught me a valuable lesson also one day i asked him i was like man i won't say his name i was like xyz how do you do it you've been married so long like how do you do it and he's like book i got two hobbies you gotta get you some hobbies man valuable lesson man now i used to have a hobby I used to play ball all the time but i gave that up because she said i played ball too much and i spent more time with her but then we started fighting more getting into it more bickering more i should have never gave my hobby up now with my stepfather i mean my father-in-law he had a couple of hobbies one was playing basketball religiously he would go play basketball twice a week he would go fishing on the weekend. These are things, activities that's occupying his time, keeping away from the house just enough, not too much, but just enough so each other can breathe. He can, you know, digress, relax, get things off his, off his brain, let the stress off. She can do her thing. My, my mother-in-law at the time, she can do her thing, and then they can come back together in harmony. You know, you gotta have that balance. And uh, he was also a, a Mason, so he would go on trips also with the Masons. And uh, so I guess three three activities. But yeah, up until, man, up until his 60s, he played ball. Um, and I would go visit, I would go play ball with him. And I was a young man, and he was still out there, man, in shape playing ball. And uh, yeah, yeah, so brothers don't. Don't get caught up in that, man. Uh, it may seem all good in the beginning. Y'all around each other so much. And y'all may actually like each other, man. I like my woman. I, I just love her. I like her. I like being around her. But I got to have my space, man. And she needs her space. Because after a while, just out of the blue, man, you're going to collide. And you don't even know where it came from. It's just because you guys need that space, man. And, uh... Yeah, get that space, get you a couple of hobbies, and then bring that thing back together, you know, and uh, it's going to make the, the relationship uh, just that more enjoyable, right? So the third thing I learned, the purse comes first. 
Take care of your business. Meaning, don't ever put pleasure before business. You know what you have to do. You know what's on your plate. You know what's on your table. You know your responsibilities. Don't fall for the guilt trip. Don't fall for the puppy dog eyes, the sad voice from your woman, uh, or even your kids, especially those daughters, man. Those daughters get to you also. Handle your business. Uh, take care of your business. The business comes first. The business being taken care of properly allows us to enjoy vacations, right? Pleasantries. Um, you know, things that uh, we take for granted, our, our kids take for granted, our wife may take for granted, going out to eat, right? Entertainment, movies, trips, taking care of the business allows that. When you lose focus and you don't take care of your business and you give in to that temptation, that simping, you take care of the pleasure before the business, you're going to end up bitter and end up angry, have regret, and you're going to want to blame that woman. Can't blame her. You knew what you had to do. It's about discipline, being self-aware, and standing your ground. You know what you got to do, man. Um, the beginning of the video, uh, you saw a clip from the movie, I Think I Love My Wife. Now, that video, <clears throat> that clip is about Chris Rock, an actor. He's been, uh, he's been slacking on the job. Not only on the job, he's been slacking in the home as a father and a husband. His boss, the white gentleman, is somewhat lecturing him and trying to game him up. Chris Rock is close to being fired because he's been sipping with this young chick young, beautiful chick, and uh, maybe he's having a midlife crisis, but none of that matters. It's about the bottom line. You ain't handling your business. And that's basically what his boss is telling him. Now, what I like about this clip is the boss gave him some, some profound game, man. He said, you'll never lose women chasing money, but you will lose money chasing women. That's profound and so true. The purse comes first. Handle your business first. If she wants to walk, let her walk. Man, I dated this woman, and uh, I can't even say we dated, man. We messed around for years. And I'm going to tell you why we just messed around for years, and I never took her serious. And we were just getting to know each other. I guess you call it courting. Uh, we're getting to know each other. She's asking me questions. I'm asking her questions. And I'm telling you something that turned me off. And I knew we could go no further. I asked her, so why did you and your ex-husband divorce? And she told me he worked too much. He was too dedicated to his career. I lied to you not. This is what she told me. Right then, I told myself, oh, this is it. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. I can't respect that. I can't take you serious. Now, I kept messing with her, not on a serious level, but you know, but uh, hey man, and she, she made great money. Great money, smart. Uh, actually, she, 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 she thought she was smarter than she really was. And uh, hey man, had it going on. Beautiful, had it going on, but I would never, ever settle down with her, and uh, ever, and I always kept it real with her, but, uh, and I, I used to hurt her that I wouldn't settle with her, but the thing was, I couldn't respect her stance on why she got a divorce. She left him because he worked too much. I mean, what are you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grinder, I'm a hustler, I'm a worker. Uh, so I know this ain't gonna work. So I ain't about to deal with what he dealt with. So you let me know already. You and I can't work together. So uh, yeah, yeah, man. The purse comes first. That man did not beg her. Uh, 
to not divorce him. He went on, did his thing, and climbed the corporate ladder, the ladder, and uh, went on to remarry. And so, uh, hey, it is what it is. Number four, don't function on a woman's frequency. Choose logic over emotion. So, as a young man, even some older man, but especially as a young man, you're kind of figuring out yourself, right? Especially if you were raised by a single mom, you kind of, you're off balance. Your emotions are off, off balance. Uh, you're not really perfected in living in your true essence as a man, as a young man, masculinity, because you didn't have those two sexes in the home, the femininity and the masculinity. So you're a bit off balance. So a lot of times young men would get into it and even older men would get into it with women and they'll operate on her frequency. And it, it comes natural somewhat to them because that's who they were raised by, a woman. And uh, it's not good. You know, it's a lose-lose for you, brothers. You, you'll get in a lot of trouble. And you can't win in that situation. So if you, uh, if you argue with the woman, the thing is, the people say, what kind of man argues with a woman? All right? If you fight a woman, hit a woman, the public says, what kind of man fights a woman and hits a woman? It's a lose-lose. So don't pay any attention, man. Don't give them that energy. Uh, actually, you know, stay away from overly emotional women. Uh, women are emotional anyway, but uh, you, you want a woman that, Tilt somewhat on a balance end. She may not be totally balanced, and, and that's okay. But I'm talking about whose emotions are way off. Stay away from that woman. But this is about us. So going back to that, don't function on her frequency. That femininity frequency, yelling, arguing, hollering. Don't go there. Uh, trying to prove who's better, who's right. Don't get go there. You, you, you have her be submissive or you you guide her or control her, however you want to say it through logic you're not going to get her to be submissive or follow you through emotion, it's not going to work because that's her frequency she might as well be with the woman you know, the only way you can get her to follow and be submissive is if you function within your true essence, which is masculinity and logic. Now, the woman being emotional and operating on that frequency is not a bad thing. We got to have that balance. When we come together, we form one union and we're so much powerful because we got both, both energies. But if you got a man operating on a femininity, femininity uh, emotion or energy, frequency, with a woman whose emotion also, man, that is disaster in the making. It will not work. And so this is something, if you didn't have a man or men, solid men in your life to guide you, to be an example, this is something you have to be conscious of and really practice, consciously practice this and, and exercise this. And you may not need to be in a relationship, man, for years until you really get to know you and uh, build yourself up as a man, you know, emotionally and mentally and spiritually. And that's OK. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do so that when you do go into a relationship, man, you can go into that thing, operating on that that logic frequency, that masculinity frequency, and you can avoid some of the downfalls men fall into when they collide with women, all right? Number five, have a few streams of income. Be about your business. 
few streams of income. I learned this from a gentleman. Man, he had a few things going on. Uh, a few things going on. So I just tell you about a couple of things he going he had he had going on and what happened to him. But he was able to sustain because he had multi uh, multi strings of income. So I knew this gentleman, he was an engineer at TI, Texas Instruments. But on the side, he was a broker, a real estate broker. No, no, I take that back. He was a builder. He had a builder's license and he used to build homes. Now, in some way, after a while, man, after years of doing this, man, he, he made good money on both ends, right? Corporate America and as an entrepreneur. Now, some kind of way, it got back. Uh, now, this is his version. It got back that uh, he had this huge home. His home was huge, huge. It was larger than his manager at TI. Huge. It, it, it doubled, maybe tripled the size of his manager at TI. The car he drove <laughs> and, and price tag tripled his manager's car, the value of his manager's car. This got back to people and the whispering started and uh, jealousy sunk in in corporate America. And uh, they just start picking at him, writing him up for anything. And uh, after a while, man, they, they let him go. And he had been there like 15 years. They let him go over something, man. It's petty. Man, he didn't miss a beat. Not only did he not miss a beat, he elevated to a whole different level because now he was able to put more time and energy into his brokerage firm, firm his real estate brokerage firm, and he climbed to a new height. And so it was a blessing in disguise. But if he didn't have that on the side, and they kept picking at him and eventually released him. Man, he had been stuck out there in the cold. Now this man had a wife and a few kids and uh, he would have been in a dire straight situation that, uh, yeah, he, he, he just didn't want, probably want to deal with, no one wants to deal with that, but he would have had, had to have de dealt with it. So when I watched this happen and, and take place, I was a young man, he was older. A lot older. And I was like, wow. I never want to be stuck in that situation. Uh, fast forward, I was stuck in that situation because I got rocked to sleep by corporate America, making good money, security, so-called security. And then bam, lost my job, didn't have anything outside, another stream of income. Went through my 401k, went through my savings. Um, and so, yeah, and that's when, and I knew better because I saw him as an example. Uh, but I had to go through it. I had to go through it to really get it. And so I'm glad I went through that and I got it. And so now I got a few things going on. But yeah, these are just things, a few things. I've learned a lot more from older men, but these are just a few things I've learned. Uh, a few nuggets of knowledge and wisdom uh, I've taken hold of and I'm sharing and giving back to you. And like me, some things you're just going to have to go through because you think it's all sweet. It can't happen to you or you, you know, you're being rocked to sleep with comfort, uh, so-called comfort and stability. But uh, now you know, though. So even if you run into those hardships, you can reflect on what I said and rebound from it okay just a few nuggets from me to you and uh yeah let it sink in brothers peace